Um, hello, everyone. Nice to meet you all. This is um, I'm very excited to run this demo of, of Cassie meeting for you today. I'm going to put myself in the shoes of, of the architect who today is uh, asked to um, assess right, this large application estate for, for a client. For this purpose, I have scanned the source code already with cast imaging of many of the apps. So I want to look, I want us to look at the results together. First, I can see that, that many applications, right, are composing this, uh, this estate. Each and every dot in this view here is one system, one business application. My estate is mostly composed of mainframe technology. As we can see when I filter through the technologies, right? So I've got some Visa all over the place, IMSDB, some DB2, of course, kicks in, in some of the systems as well. But I see a couple of distributed technologies as well. I've got some J2E, maybe some .NET on the periphery of this large uh, ecosystem. Obviously, the notion of uh, an application on the mainframe is somewhat blurry, right? It's difficult to draw hard lines between processes, workloads, applications. It, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to get at, which is why most of the systems that we see in this uh, estate are interconnected. That could be because of programs calling each other in the different applications. It could be because even of shared data, right? Database elements that are common on the uh, on the different applications uh, and, and reused across the, the, the apps. All right, so let's see, right? As the architect, my client wants to, wants to gain in business agility. One of the thoughts and strategies they've worked so far is that we could migrate some applications to a mainframe as a service platform, maybe to a mainframe cloud provider. Uh, that way we can get the benefits that um, automate certain things as part of a DevSecOps implementation, get some flexibility, upgrade the hardware, some cost savings maybe. But it's obviously a very large lift uh, to say we're going to take those 80 applications and move them at, uh, at once. However, what I can see pretty clearly, just looking at this uh, rendering here, is that there is a cluster, right? Some kind of a subcluster of applications here that seems to be isolated compared to the rest of the of the of the mainframe environment. It has very limited interactions with the rest of the of the estate, and is maybe easier to address. I kind of want to zoom in and get more details. What I can see is that all my dependencies are really uh, summarized, resumed in one uh, particular place here between my Andromeda system and my card demo uh, systems. It tells me that they are cobble to cobble, meaning programs from Andromeda are calling programs from, from card demo. I could have multiple programs doing, doing such. And uh, this is what ties the cluster above with the large cluster at the, at the bottom. So I can also zoom in and I might want to do this as part of my investigation to figure out that there's actually only one dependency, one link between the, the two that I would want to investigate and get more info, info on. I'll keep orienting it the same way. So I've got my Andromeda here on the, on the right and um, Card Demo on the left. As I continue my investigation, the, the natural next step will be where is that dependency originating from? What's the place in the code base? What's the context for which we have this dependency being established? I'm going to ask this to, to cast imaging as the system to add to the view a program, apparently, which establishes that dependencies to, to count them. I might want to get even more detailed view and see precisely where this is originating. It's actually a very specific uh, paragraph called 2000 process. I can get down to the source code since all of this is reverse engineered using the source code. I can get to that level to really see the context in which that dependency is uh, is made. That's an actual dependency to an external COBOL program in a different system. Next up in my investigation, it will be about, of course, uh, looking into the, the destination, the target. Where are we getting with this dependency inside of CAMP demo? I've got this COA C to C uh, program that is being accessed. Same thing, all based on the source code, so I can look at the source code, better understand the, the context, the, the, the thing, the piece of code, the, the technology that is being accessed. 
And I can see this is a very, very large program. Lots of lines of code seems to be very complex. I got a few properties, a few additional facts, elements that were gathered by the analysis engine telling me, for example, this is a high complexity program, 600 systematic complexity. It is taking a lot of decisions. There's a lot of logic uh, implemented into that program. That's kind of my first um, little clue that this is a larger process than just one dependency. It seems to be a bit complex. What I might want to do right now is get into a next level into card demo into that um, system that is being accessed to better understand how this particular program however complex is being uh, executed what's the flow the context in which all of that code gets uh, gets awakened I'm gonna ask this to cast imaging and drill down into the actual card demo application the next system over as part of the large cluster to better understand where is this getting executed so i'm now seeing the same program we had before but as part of the context of execution in the target environment so it's pretty typical i have got a transaction kicks transaction that has been created that points to the program that then executes ends up in uh, some visa and files obviously my first reaction as an architect is that maybe the, the dependency they have created is a little bit uh, rough I'm pointing directly to the program and there is a neat perfect uh, kicks transaction that is uh, could be used for that purpose it's already uh, again an additional clue that this is a little bit legacy there were a few changes being made uh, after the fact or someone that did not understand the, the point of the API so to speak that was exposed through the through the transaction but never mind now, back to my original problem, I want to move that cluster off of my current environment and into a more modern uh, execution environment. But I've got this dependency down to this kind of context. One strategy that I could uh, use is to extract all of that code out of the current demo application to actually migrate it along with all the other apps. The idea being that if this is isolated, if all of that code processing and data is kind of on its own, it maybe was misclassified. It should not really belong into the current demo application, but definitely belong, belongs with Andromeda, and that makes my job easier to migrate everything off. Uh, but I want to make sure that I don't have any dependencies into that code, into the rest of the application. That might kind of create a challenge, a threat, uh, an issue with my strategy. I'm going to run a little simulation. First, I'm going to ask imaging to show me all the code elements because there was some processing to render the view a bit more user-friendly, showing me only the critical path, etc., to accelerate my understanding. But there's actually a lot more to it, right? Lots of copybooks all over the place. I'm going to uh, flag those elements to be decoupled, right? Uh, this is what I want to decouple from the current application to migrate along with the rest. I'm just classifying it that way through, through imaging. Then I really want to run a simulation. I want to be able to uh, see if those elements are really tied to the rest of the application in a heavy way or in a light way. To do this, I'm going to use this environment here. This is going to be Kevin's simulation. Um, and I'm going to ask the, the environment to populate that view using what we already know about the application. So let's just take the current demo application, everything that is in it, the architecture that was already discovered, all the code for that specific system. I'm going to say, I want to simulate an extraction of all the components that I've already flagged as to be decoupled. It takes me a few clicks, but basically I'm selecting all those elements. I'm saying, yeah, this is what I want to decouple. I think the name of the transaction was CAUP, so I'm going to just give the transaction name. It's going to run that simulation, compute, if I wanted to extract it, what would be the resulting dependencies to the rest of the application. And I can see that there is a lot, right? There's a lot of dependencies. It, it is not an isolated process. The programs might be called all over the place. They might be calling all the programs. The data might be shared between multiple flows. I can see lots of dependencies. There are even quantified, so I can see uh, the numbers, right? 205, 12, 13, 14, 322. Definitely a lot of code level intricate dependencies 
in my application. So that first strategy, which looks at let's remove that code from the from the if state, is a little bit problematic, right? It's not something I can do that easily. It's going to be a large program. I have to think, I have to be creative and think of a different way of, of approaching it. Another way would be maybe, why not, to actually keep that processing in the existing application, but expose it through an API to the web so that the cluster that I'm moving can still contact and get the information it needs. That's a completely different approach, um, which will um, kind of be required that I create some elements here, some code, technology, some API that will open up the access to um, to that transaction in that part of the of the mainframe. If I want to do that, there are a few things I need to still check about this particular transaction. I want to make sure there are no um, dependencies that would be external. I want to make sure if I want to expose data, I don't authorize external people to write the data, right? My, my application still needs to own the computing, the business logic that is inside of it. I just want to liberate the data that is as part of my platform and make it accessible to the other applications. A couple of things to check. In order to do this, I'll, I'll highlight right in, in, in my product here, the different endpoints, the, the places where the execution of the code stops and ends up. Um, I can see a few different types. Uh, the, the legend, of course, is going to help me. So I see a few VZAM files that are where data is apparently stored and, and read or, or written. But I also see here what looks to be a program. CEE days is a program, looks to be ex external. Uh, so something that complicates again this strategy. I'm still going to, to, to go that way because it's easier than the other ones, but I might want to add some knowledge to this diagram to make sure everyone knows we have to address that particular program first. I'm going to make it in red because it's pretty important to me. I'm, I'm, I'm tying it to the, to the code element here. I'm going to say careful, there's an external program. And uh, please be mindful, review, and address before opening up the APIs. This is a way for me enhance that technical diagram with information that I'm, I'm creating, that I'm deciding upon, that will then be available for everyone looking at the diagram. So if you think of that program, that whole modernization going to my actual teams and my developers that will do the work, everyone seeing that blueprint, everyone looking at Castamity, will see those annotations, those views, those information um, in order to, to better collaborate and be more efficient share the knowledge in a, in a proper way uh, for, for everyone developing. So the, the I'm going to park aside this, this particular program. This is going to be a problem for, for tomorrow for the development team, but I've got still a few, a few things I want to make sure I don't uh, forget uh, when I'm modernizing the, the system and I'm opening this, this layer of the application through the through an API, for example, the types of accesses that are being made to the to the code or to the VZAM uh, data that is stored, I don't want to open up a right access to the external world. Right? So I want to be mindful that, yes, some of the processing in this particular flow appears to be doing a write, and I want to kind of close that off before I open, uh, open it up to the, to the external world. So just a way of reverse engineering this. Uh, through the through the source code, I've got here two write accesses on my vision file coming from a paragraph called write processing. So pretty pretty self-explanatory. It's actually originating in this um, in this paragraph, which is less explicit. Right, decide action, which is where the logic is actually implemented, whether to do a read or to do uh, a write. And this is probably the portion of the application. I would want to change the logic, make sure it's logical with my opening up of the API so that we don't open up certain functionalities of the platform that are not really desired in this remote connectivity. Uh, so just a, another type of investigation you can make very, very quickly. Um, assuming I put controls in place to, to handle those two potential challenges, I can then 
open up this application through the through the web, through an API mechanism that allows me again to move those this tiny cluster of applications away and start realizing those benefits in a kind of a quick win way, uh, rather than, than everything we said trying and uh, eventually uh, failing. And as we said, right, again, for everything I've shown here, it exists in the code, the data is in the code. Um, it was, however, hidden in the complexity. It was masked by years of technical debt, of enhancement and, and layers of archeology, span but it was there. Uh, getting to that level of understanding uh, of a series of system by, by looking manually at the code is of course possible. It's just not practical. Uh, here in a couple of minutes, uh, with cast imaging, I was able to kind of uncover facts about the code that, that might have taken days or, or weeks of investigation uh, otherwise. 